Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's video is showcasing the power of Severance Enclosure, as I've covered this exotic one too many times in the past before. However, this season we have received a brand new Void Fragment called Echo of Sea Station, which allows users to turn target volatile after a finisher. Now, combining the two allows you to create an explosive volatile finisher setup with some very amazing results. But not only that, by building into our melee a grenade together, we can also chain void explosions back to back and also get a free overshield for all our efforts. This build is both fun and powerful to use when you want to clear out an area completely in the most hilarious way possible. And although it may not be something you want to use in most endgame content, its explosive nature can be useful in many ways that you may not have thought about before. So, to start, you're going to want to have controlled demolition where hitting a target with void abilities or volatile explosion makes them volatile. Further damage to volatile targets causes them to explode and grant health to you and your allies. Then you'll want offensive bulwark where upon having an overshield, your grenades charge faster, you have increased melee range and damage, and melee final blows extend the duration of overshields. As Severance Enclosure relies on finishers or charge melee to work, it allows users to build around the melee how they like. A simple shield throw onto a weak target can cause them to explode and also cause others to get launched by the explosion as well, which makes them vulnerable for a few seconds. To fully make this work in your favour when not using your melee, you want to utilise your grenades to feed back into your melee and vice versa. But doing this with the mods, offensive bulwark and fragment provided will make sure that both stats are fully usable and will support each other one way or another. Fragments used are Echo Cessation, where finisher final blows create a burst of void damage that causes nearby targets to become volatile, Echo of Exchange where melee final blows grant grenade energy, Echo of Revision where damaging targets with grenades grant melee energy, and Echo of Instability where defeating targets with grenades grant volatile rounds. Out of the four, Echo Cessation, Exchange and Provision are going to be the go-to fragments you'll want for supporting the build from start to finish. The idea here is that if we have a weapon that has Repulsive Brace on it, we can make use of the Offensive Bulwark effect with a fast grenade cooldown upon activation of our overshields. From here, we can use the Magnetic Grenades for their short duration as well and build our mods and fragments that benefit melee energy return from grenade damage to always have our melee accessible. With the amount of ways to become volatile, this will become beneficial for us in terms of triggering the right conditions needed to always have our charge melee available for bigger booms. Of course, finishers will be used throughout the setup as much as we can. This here has been done just so we have a second option available if we aren't able to pull off a finisher. For the mods and stats section, considering that we're not relying on an exotic that grants additional stat benefits one way or another, we have to rely on our subclass options and mods to fill in the gap. Luckily, building this year has become a lot more easier with major revamps implemented. So the main stats to invest in will be Resilience, Discipline and Strength. Now both Discipline and Strength can be from tier 8 to 10 as we want to make sure we are able to balance their effects properly, while Resilience for example can be at tier 6 to 10 since Echo Cessation will create Void Breaches that grant us class ability energy back upon use. Although Resilience should be higher, we are only using barricades to trigger the distribution mod we have for a flat 4% ability energy return. You can have this higher if you want more damage reduction while playing, but just remember this isn't required for making the build fully work. Your discipline and strength however will need to be higher if you want to create an effective build outside the design of the exotic. T8 is ideal to have for discipline as this will be tied into your magnetic grenade's low cooldown rate it offers. And from here, Innovation and Bomber Mod are the only requirements you'll need for supporting your grenades with the following setup. Do you remember that we have the Echo of Exchange fragment available where using your melee will grant us grenade energy back, which is pretty rewarding upon use. Not only that, but by having charged up times 2 stacks on stacks, Void Siphon, Firepower and Reaper Mod, which all gives you ways of creating armor charges, basically means that the innovation mod will be consistently granting you grenade energy on top of the offensive bulk activation when available. I recommend you try this out and see how effective it is as it really does help out with the build with supporting the build further. For your strength stat, you want to have the same tier as discipline has, but for mods you want to have the melee kickstart, momentum transfer, and invigoration mod for melee cooldown accessibility. 
Millie doesn't require a lot of specking into, so you can get away with having a low stat if you want, considering what options we have available. As long as we start a fight with our charged melee shield throw first, we can then easily rely on our grenades to fill the gap and get our melee charges back up without the use of melee based weapon perks. If done correctly, you should get a build that feeds back into each other as designed with little cost. Now lastly for weapons, I have two recommendations to offer. Firstly, we have the Hero's Burden SMG from Iron Banner with Fragile Focus and Repulsive Place as its two main perks. For the build, you want to make sure your offensive bullet aspect is working as planned and for that you need the ability to create overshields on demand. I have found that the following weapon with Repulsive Place will help us out a lot in generating grenade energy over the given time our overshields last and from there we will lead back to our melee and class ability and go full circle for the user. Of course, you do not need to have the following SMG to make the build work. You have options available to where the perk can show up, such as Hollow Denial, Unforgiven, and Doom of Chelsius, etc. I would also recommend you have the Dermatistic Chaos machine gun for boss DPS and for further aiding us within the build. It can both debuff and apply volatile rounds onto a target, which if you have a weapon with a pulse place as mentioned, then you have another way of getting overshields on demand when out of ability energy. Or if you're using next season and we don't have the seasonal mod called Volatile Flow anymore. The seventh enclosure is an absolutely fun and versatile exotic to use in content, depending on where and when you'd like to apply its explosive effect. As it now works with all charred mini effects for the subclasses we have available, you can create some weird and wacky combos that just work out really well for how simple it is. The following build, for example, combines two ideas together to create a setup that benefits us for the long run and rewards us for playing aggressive and getting those finishers as designed. Not only will you be launching targets into the air and making them vulnerable, but you'll also make them volatile, which from here we can wipe them out or get an overshield for ourselves and feed us back into our abilities over and over again. This here means that as long as we get a finisher on one target or even just get an A shield throw, we can cause a chain reaction to occur and juggle targets as they lay helplessly. There isn't a lot to the build that requires users to fully understand it, nor do you need to have a large amount of key items to really support the build. The severance is what I like to call a passive exotic that is always active in the background and can be used whenever the user likes, with or without a charged melee. Its effects can allow you to carry it towards endgame content, including GMs if you wish. However, don't expect anything incredible outside of what it offers. It gets the job done, provides quite a few benefits for the player to enjoy, and in terms of flexibility, it offers just that from strikes, gambit, PvP to any endgame content you have in mind. Now is the perfect time to use exotic for what it's worth, and like I said before, I'm going to cover this exotic as many times as I like, as it really is a great exotic to have. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.